continue to fill questions for you, Samilia. I have a student asking about the research type questions and murmur questions on the U.S. Simile, especially the 2CK, because some students have been talking about getting those questions on their exam. Do I have any tips slash tricks in terms of reviewing slash studying for that stuff? And I have a very solid answer here. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L man underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. So students asking about the research type questions, murmur questions, also drug ads, how to tackle that stuff for the exam, particularly 2CK. And I can give you a very solid answer here. Now, look, it is absolutely the case. Uh, I've had some students take the 2CK. It's not so much a step one issue. It really is a 2CK issue. Uh, where students are coming out talking about long drug ad type questions, mini research article type questions, uh, and even lots of murmur questions. Uh, and they're asking how to prepare for these better because the clinical mastery series forms, the NBMEs, they don't really hit these things too much. What I can tell you is that the drug ad questions, the research, mini research article type questions in particular, the advice I have is I don't think it should. I don't think your management, your study uh, tactics, should be changed in any way. You're gonna have to fucking handle it the same way everyone else has to deal with it. Okay, there's a bit of improvisation. It's like you're in a surgery and a novel variable comes up, and you say, "Okay, well, I wasn't prepared for that, but I'm gonna use my my medical knowledge and my intuition, and this is how I'm gonna tackle it." That's how you have to approach the questions. All right. But you don't have to change your study plan in order to do that. I do have a, tact a tactic, though, which is I recommend flagging the drug ad slash research article questions are often a triple set where you can't change your answer as you move through. I recommend flagging those and coming back to them because you're not going to know how much time you have to tackle them. Okay, so let's say you're eight questions into a block. You've got a triple fucking drug ad research article question there. You don't know whether you're going to have three minutes left at the end at the end of the block or 12 minutes left. So flag it. You got to deal with it. Just have it on the back of your mind. I'm going to have to pace and come back to it. And then you can return to it and say, cool, I have 11 minutes. Shit, I only have two fucking minutes, okay? As far as the murmur questions are concerned, I've made prior clips talking about how you need to verbally remember how the murmurs sound. And then that can help you in terms of auscultating, even if you feel like you're your listening skills suck jack fucking shit. In other words, let's say you've memorized, you know verbally that aortic regurg is going to be a decrescendo holodiastolic murmur or an early diastolic murmur, loudest after S2. Okay, you you know that verbally, you can regurgitate it, but you say, I don't know how to fucking hear for it. Okay, well, let's say you get an aortic dissection, which can retrograde propagate toward the aortic root, cause aortic regurg. You can say, well, that's what we have here, Marfan syndrome with potential aortic dissection. Let me, and it's a murmur question. I'm going to move the stethoscope to the aortic location. I'm going to listen to it. And yeah, I feel like I'm probably hearing a hollow diastolic murmur there where it sounds a little bit louder after S2. So your verbal retention of your verbal knowledge of what the murmurs are supposed to sound like, you can in turn apply that on the exam when you're trying to imagine what you're listening to, okay? I've had some students complain that they're, that they're having questions where there's no vignette at all, and then they're just supposed to listen. Well, in that case, I, it's not like I recommend you going off on YouTube or putting on your uh, phone how to listen, like what does a mitral valve prolapse sound like and practicing listening to a mid stock Like I don't recommend that, okay? You just have to fucking handle it, all right? You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.